When you think of ancient builds in evolution life, a few things usually spring to mind. Crocodiles, coelacanths, horseshoe crabs, etc. However, there is one creature which has been in the game for so long that it's already been forgotten by many. It's the Velvet Worm, and it has been playable ever since the early Paleozoic, but does this mean they are actually viable? First, let's look at their base stats. Given how primitive Velvet Worms are, their base stats aren't very impressive, with abysmal defense and mobility. In fact, Velvet Worms don't have much in the way of self-defense, which means it's game over if they ever get caught by their enemies. So far, it's not looking too good for the Velvet Worm, and also for the duration of this video, but offensively there are a few aspects to talk about. In order to compensate for their snail speed, Velvet Worms specced into a unique weapon, Slime. The Velvet Worm shoots the slime out of oral tubes, straight at its enemy. Upon contact, the glue hardens almost instantly, immobilizing the victim. By the way, if the Velvet Worm misses, which can still happen despite the wide spray of glue, then it's attempt number two. After prey is immobilized, the Velvet Worm player can slowly move in and use its mouth parts to crack open the hard exoskeletons of their arthropod prey, before injecting saliva in order to turn them into XP. This projectile type weapon is quite effective offensively, although unfortunately for Velvet Worms, its only use defensively speaking is as a distraction, which as we all know isn't very reliable, and it only gets worse from here for this build. The Velvet Worm Worm has a number of weaknesses. First, their reliance on water. Similarly to amphibians, velvet worms are extremely vulnerable to dehydration, and as a result are limited to moist areas of the map, such as among leaf litter and rotting wood. Velvet worms breathe through holes along their bodies known as trachea, in the same way as insects. However, unlike insects, velvet worms do not possess the ability to close off these openings and thus cannot control water loss, which is why they are limited to moist biomes. Second, as mentioned before, their lack of a hard exoskeleton means they have almost zero defensive options. In fact, their hydrostatic skeletons don't even allow them to grow larger than their max size, because their bodies cannot support the added weight. Third, the Velvet Worm's sensory organs, especially compared to other invertebrates like dragonflies and spiders, are primitive and outdated. They only have simple eyes and don't possess compound eyes like insects do, which makes sense since they aren't insects. Velvet worms also have papillae, which are connected to nerves, and which help them navigate their surroundings and find prey. There's a bunch of other gimmicks that Velvet Worm fans will tell you to make their build look better, such as how their claws and hydraulic legs allow them to move on all sorts of terrain, or how their skin repels water, or how they can squeeze in tight spaces or whatever. But seriously, the Velvet Worm is really outdated in the Anthropocene. They have primitive sensory organs, zero good defenses and extreme vulnerability to dehydration. While they were once revolutionary for being one of the first builds to unlock the terrestrial biomes, the game has changed greatly since then, and today Velvet Worms are outclassed by both insects and vertebrates so I would put this build in Y tier. They have barely any good defenses, and dehydration is a serious threat to them, which, coupled with their gimmicky traits, makes them pretty useless in my opinion. Comment down below what you would like to see on the channel next, hit that like button with a velvet worm and subscribe to my channel. Share this video with all your Cambrian friends on social media. Thanks for watching and just to let you know let me know if you would like more videos about fish instead.